In the past five years, we've had the biggest improvement on hardware ever, and I've been using computers for a while. This meant a lot of older components have gotten obsolete very, very quickly. Up until a few years ago, you could use 10 year old components fine. And it's actually what I was doing when I started my PC flipping career. I was basically getting old i7-920s and uh, i7-860s, basically from the first gen x58, but also the consumer boards and uh, deleting them back when it wasn't so popular with terminal paste because it was on a very low budget and liquid metal was expensive. And then slapping on a newer GPU and making budget gaming PCs and selling them for a profit. I've been doing that for a while and my very old, very bad videos on the channel are about a very young me doing exactly that. However, nowadays it seems like older hardware, like the one I have right next to me, is basically trash. But is that actually true? So here we are with a little recap of what I've been doing behind the scenes because I figured, okay, nowadays mobile chips are so fast that they beat even an older i7 from just a few years ago. Sure, Ryzen has done so much to basically render obsolete anything before it. And you can buy older AM4 motherboards with a Ryzen 5 3600 for 50 bucks. So there's pretty much no point in buying older stuff, right? Well, that's what most people are thinking and they are literally throwing away stuff. So all the components you see here have two things in common. The first thing is they are deemed as trash by the general population. But the second thing is I got them for free. This whole PC build, I did for free. And this motherboard combo with a Noctua cooler, I got for free because people are just throwing them away. They come to me to upgrade their PCs and they're like, can you get rid of my old stuff? I don't want to bring it to the dumpster. And I'm like, sure. So I set on to do a few tests because I wanted to see where the breaking point is, meaning what can I still use? And by use, I don't mean run a very slow computer to type in Microsoft Word because if that's what I wanted to do, then sure, we could probably still use the PCs I was building when I started my career in tech. However, I'm talking proper PC utilization, browsing, doing modern stuff, like maybe some slight photo editing, some very light gaming, browsing with multiple tabs, things like these. What we have here today is a very good, very expensive at the time, Azure Fatality motherboard with an i5-4440 with an Octa cooler. And on this side, we have something even more special. We have an X79 platform with an i7-3820 with a very rare motherboard. It's the Asus P9 X79. I have the box right here. Now, this is an eight DIMM slot motherboard, but just two slots still work. So we have 60 gigabytes of Corsair memory on it. And about this motherboard, they actually made a full series on Instagram. So if you don't follow me there, I show a lot of behind the scenes stuff on Instagram because I actually started doing short format content back in the day. This motherboard, we, we were able to bring back to life with vinegar because it removed rust. I also saw that Brian from Tech City has been having success with that recently and I'm very happy. Turns out vinegar can do wonders for old hardware. So give it a shot. I tried everything with this one, BIOS flashing, reflowing, washing it. Nothing worked, but then vinegar fixed it. So maybe worth soaking in a $1 bottle of vinegar, you know? Now here we also have a very cheap, very old Arctic cooler. It's very good also still. And then we have an Asus Strix GTX 960, which they brought to me artifacting. But uh, on the GTX 900, what you can do is you can BIOS flash it with a lower core clock or what I did here, BIOS flash it with a higher voltage. So we're basically overvolting it and we are getting more overclocking headroom. And so it's now overclocked at the factory clock, well, overvolted to run at the factory clock. And uh, it is, of course, gonna last a few years and then break forever, but it's a few years extra, which we've got. And I repasted it, washed it down with the garden hose like I always do. And the PC is basically brand new, except for the, yeah, little feet that it's missing. And I put some cardboard there, which maybe is not very professional of me. I should have gotten something better. But anyways, orange sticker. VS power supply. Some of you will know what this means. For the ones who don't know, I will just leave you with a doubt. But this thing still works. So maybe the stereotype was not true in the end. Who knows? This budget gaming PC cost me zero dollars, just a tube of thermal paste and some labor because it was all mismatched parts, thrown away, broken, which I fixed. So what can we do with it in 2025? Well, surprisingly, 
Thanks to the SSD and the i7, which has six core 12 threads, we can multitask fine. We can use Chrome, we can type in Microsoft Word while having other documents open, while having a video in the background. So this is still a proper working computer. It's a waste to throw it away. Please, if you have something similar, do not throw it away. Now, I know if you're from a third world country, you're probably never thinking of throwing it away. But if you are from a first world country, please do not throw it away. Find some usage for it. Okay, maybe an HTPC, gift it to someone, like, please do not throw away hardware, but can we game on it? That's the question. And as you should know, GTX 900 drivers have been discontinued. So that's going to be our main issue. And it was a massive issue. I had to fight against the drivers and uh, Call of Duty really doesn't like this card, but I was able to make it run even there. So the results are, you definitely cannot play any modern titles properly on this machine. However, you can play competitive titles fine at around 60 FPS with everything on minimum. Yes, even Warzone at 30 FPS with everything on minimum 1080p. Of course, you can't go above 1080p at all, but you can do it. You can also play older games plenty fine. For example, Witcher 3, non-remastered. When it came out, it was hard to run on a PC like this. It's still hard to run, but it still runs. So if you're gaming, and by gaming, I don't mean cyberpunk. I mean like indie games, you know, like light titles. A PC like this is gonna serve you well and spending any other kind of money on a brand new PC like the ones I show every week on the channel is a waste of money. So I'm telling you guys, as a PC builder, as someone who wants to build your next PC, I'm telling you, if you have something like this, you want to upgrade, maybe you don't have to, you know? These are still good. However, and here are where things change a lot. We are kind of cheating because this i7 has six core 12 threads. This thing is unfortunately obsolete in 2025. So a normal four core CPU with an older architecture, even if it is Skylake, like a 6600K, they are really starting to be too slow just because of how software is engineered today. So even Chrome is gonna dramatically be slower on a four core flat CPU because even on mobile, we have 612, 6C12T which is what is here. Unfortunately, for a flat i5, end of life is very near. Now, if you go ahead and put, for example, a four core eight threaded Xeon, which are compatible with a motherboard like this, you can still reutilize an H97 motherboard like this one, which has some very cool features like great onboard audio and NVMe support and can still be used. But I fear the i5s and especially the i3s, they are completely dead and definitely do not make for good gaming computers. You need at least a four core eight threads. It's the bare minimum for today. And this is not like scientific data, you know, back to 12 games meta analysis. It's just me spending a few weeks of my free time testing stuff. And uh, this is my experience. So I tried different OSs with Windows 10. Things are a bit better. Windows 10 though is end of life also. So you need like Windows 10 IoT or some different version of Windows to keep running it. Windows 11 is definitely worse, but there are like, for example, beta versions of Windows 11, which work a bit better. You can also make your own custom ISO to work a little bit better. But still, this is my recap for all the hardware in 2025. So not everything is to be thrown right in the trash, but unfortunately, a lot of stuff is getting unusable nowadays. Overclocking though, still is a game changer. If you don't overclock X79, it's going to go very slow. So make sure you learn how to do it. It's very important. And with that said, I want to hear from you guys. What's the oldest piece of hardware consumer? Don't you server guys cheat that you're still running in your monthly workload, be it for business or pleasure. Do let me know. And also let me know if it's still running well, or if you think you should upgrade it. And with that said, if you watched the video this far, maybe drop a like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.